Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we will be talking about maxima and minima. Now this might seem like a very simple word, you know, maxima and minima, but there's a few nuances that we have to probably take into account. So the the notion of maxima and minima might be seem a little bit obvious first. So maxima is you might think of as like the maximum of something, and minima is you can think of as some something like the minimum of something. So the words might seem a little bit obvious, but what does the maximum and minima actually mean? So many problems in real life talk about maximizing profit, minimizing cost, reducing materials, becoming the most efficient or whatever. So the notion of maxima and minima kind of comes into play first. So for example, the idea of max profit or least material. So anything that kind of uses this kind of language as least or max, we're going to be using the concept of maxima and minima. Now, what does maxima and minima actually mean, though? So for this one, it's best to illustrate with a graph to kind of demonstrate what's going on here. So let's go ahead and plot a graph of this. OK, so suppose I have a graph that looks something like this. Just to be very explicit what's going on here. So you might think of, for example, the maxima. So let's suppose we call this the E value. And furthermore, let's suppose this value right here, let's call that the B value. So this would be F of B, and this would be F of A. Okay, so the maxima in this situation would occur at X equals A, and the minima would occur in this case at x equals b. So intuitively, it might seem very obvious what the maximum minimum is. The maximum always occurs at kind of like the highest value, and the minima always occurs at the minimum value. Now, this might seem kind of obvious, but I thought I should probably mention that and very, and very explicitly clear up what a maxima and minima is. So this is known as so the max so this is known as the maxima, and this right here is known as the minima. So the maximum and minima always occurs at the highest and lowest points. So this is the highest point right here, and that's the lowest point. Not Nothing too crazy, but it's I feel like it's fitting to kind of clear that up to be very explicit. Now, the concept of maximum and minima is not that straightforward. There's also something called the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum. And for this one, it's better to draw a graph to demonstrate what's going on, because it's easier to explain this with a visualization. So suppose our graph looks something like this. So I'm going to use a different color to kind of illustrate the purposes of this. So here is the minimum. And then let's draw a graph that looks something like this. So here we go. And there we go. Okay, so let's keep going. And here we are at the very end, right here. Okay, so this value right there, so let's kind of label a few things. So let's label this point, this point, this point, and this point. Okay, now let's call this point, uh, oh, for, I should label this point as well. Let's call this point E. And just to be very clear, this is the x-axis and that's the y-axis. Let's call this point D, let's call this point C, let's call this point B, and let's call this point A. So this is the absolute minimum. This would be the absolute maximum as well. Maximum. Okay, so the absolute maximum is the maximum that occurs at the, uh, over its entire domain. So the domain of the function is all of this kind of part. The absolute maximum is the highest point on, across its entire domain. So for example, it's something like sine and cosine. So for example, let's draw a sine. Sine looks something like this. The absolute maximum would always occur at, uh, occur at this point. The absolute minimum would always occur at this point. There, could, there are other minimums. For example, there's a minimum here, there's a, minimum, there's a maximum, whatever what's going on. But the point is that over its entire domain, the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum have to occur at the highest and lowest points across the entire graph.
Now, any other maximums are called the relative maximums. So for example, this right here is called the relative maximum. This very appropriately is called the relative minimum. So let me just very clear, clear it up. So relative minimum. And this right here would also be well, okay, let me clear up something here. Now, a lot of people might think that this right here is a relative minimum, but a relative minimum can never occur at the endpoints. There can be an absolute minimum because it's in the domain of the graph, but relative implies that we're looking at an open boundary around that point. There isn't really a boundary around that point though. I mean, you could argue that there's this left-hand side, but there's nothing on the right-hand side of this graph. So you can't have a relative maximum or minimum at the endpoints. So that can't happen. So just to be very clear what's going on there, a relative, so I'm going to for rel for sure. So relative maximum or a minimum can never occur at the endpoints. So never occur at endpoints. It can't happen. And the reason for that is because, once again, we have to look at an open interval around that point. The absolute maximum minimum is easy, though. It's just the highest point on the entire graph at some point. But a relative maximum minimum has to be interpreted in terms of its nearby vicinity. It has to be looked at it at its nearby kind of domain. So because we don't know what's going on, on the right-hand side, we can't say that what's going on at the endpoints. So you can't ever say that the relative maximum or minimum occurs at an endpoint. That doesn't make any sense. So just hopefully this visualization clears up what a relative maximum is versus an absolute maximum or relative minimum is versus an absolute minimum. So I just wanted to make sure that we cleared it up. Okay, so just to kind of repeat that one more time. A relative maximum occurs at any point on over some interval across the domain of some graph. The absolute maximum or minimum always occurs at one particular point. It's the highest or lowest point on the graph. But the relative maximum or minimum occurs at an, uh, near some open interval around a given point. It can never happen in the endpoints because we don't know what's going on on the other side of the graph. So as a result, you can't really say it's relative to some kind of open interval or whatever. Okay, so hopefully that clears it up. All right, so in that situation, let's go ahead and do a very quick example. So example. Oh, I should probably use white for this just to, pretty, just to be very explicit with my coloring. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this very, very simple. I shouldn't even call this example in all honesty, but let's go ahead and do this anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a really quick graph. So suppose this point right there is minus one comma one. So that'd be here. And then let's go ahead and draw this. And that's in this point, that's two comma four. So this would be at x equals two. And this would be x equals minus one. Okay, so there is an, so you, once again, you, you might be tempted to think that minus one is a relative minimum. It's not. So the question says, identify the absolute absolute and relative extrema for f of x. And f of x is given by this function right here. Okay, so find the absolute and the relative extrema. So just to be very clear, extrema refers to like maximums or minimums. So extrema generally refers to, let me just fix my writing a little bit. That, really, that usually refers to maxima and minima. It doesn't refer to like anything else. So just to be very clear as to what extrema means. Okay. So there's an absolute maximum at this point right here. So just to be very, very clear, there's an absolute maximum at x equals two. There is an absolute minimum at 
x equals minus 1. But minus 1 is not a relative minimum because, as I mentioned, you can't say the relative maximums and minimums occur at the, occurs at the endpoints. So I want to make this graph very clear as to what's going on here. So this point right there at 0, so x equals 0. So x equals 0 is a relative minimum because it occurs at an uh, over a certain interval. So if you look around the interval of this graph, we see that they're still kind of going back and forth. We can see that it's still going off in a certain direction around that minimum. So x equals 0 is a relative minimum. So once again, just to kind of really talk about what's going on here, around the interval x equals 0, we see that the graph goes off to the left and we see the graph goes on to the right. So there are things happening around that maximum or minimum. It's not an endpoint or there are no weird kind of loops or whatever going on there. So there is a relative minimum, so rel, so relative minimum at x equals zero. So what, just to be really clear about this, the relative minimums and maximums always occur at over an open interval inside of a graph. It never occurs at an endpoint of some kind of sorts. So you could have something like this, for example. Something like this would be a relative maximum. Something like this would be the absolute maximum. Something like this would be the absolute uh, would be the relative minimum. So it always occurs at an or at some point inside the graph. It never occurs at the endpoints or some point outside the graph. So for example, something like this would be the absolute minimum because it happens at the end point. So number one, because it happens at the endpoints. And number two, because of the fact that that's the lowest value on this graph. Now, once again, it doesn't the absolute minimum doesn't necessarily have to be the endpoints. It could also look something like this, for example. So for example, even though this doesn't happen in the endpoint, this is still the absolute um, minimum. So just to be very clear as to what's going on here. So once again, the relative minimum always occurs at a interval inside the graph. It never occurs at the endpoints. And it's where the sign of, or the direction of the graph kind of changes direction. So that's where the relative maximum or minimum occurs, just to be very, very clear about this. And again, if you have any concerns or doubts, please remember to comment uh, on the video below and I will be happy to answer. Okay, so you gotta be a bit careful though because not everything is as obvious as it seems. For example, something like this. So let's draw two graphs right here, just to be very clear. So here's the first graph plot and let's draw another plot. Okay. So suppose we have to graph y equals x squared. Okay, so there's a minimum, or very explicitly, there's an absolute minimum at x equals 0. So absolute minimum at x equals 0, because that's the lowest point on this graph. However, not all absolute minimums or maximums always occur so nicely per se. Suppose we have this graph instead. So this is the graph of y equals x cubed. You might be tempted to think that this is a minimum, but the problem is that this isn't really minimum because it's not the lowest point in the graph. I could keep going down and more down and whatever, and this wouldn't be the lowest point in the graph because I could always pick a point that's lower. Consequently, I could keep going higher and higher. So this isn't this point zero right here isn't really a maximum or minimum so so there is no absolute max or min in this case so x equals zero so maybe just to be very clear so x equals zero is not an extremum or extrema rather, so, or an extreme point. So just because it kind of looks like an extrema or whatever uh, for a certain graph does not mean that this is necessarily the, the absolute maximum or minimum. And the reason for that, once again, in this uh, right, right here, if I look at an interval around this point, I notice that the graph keeps going down even more. So it, it's, it can be a minimum. And if I look on the right-hand side, it keeps going up in a certain direction. So it can't be the maximum. That doesn't that doesn't make sense. So you gotta be very careful what, what the graph kind of looks like. So 
it's possible that a uh, mixed extrema could happen at x equals zero, but not always. So, so that's something you'd be very, very careful about. So let's kind of talk about a few other kind of situations before we move on to other things. So just to be very clear what's going on there. So, so far we have talked about maxima and minima. So there's nothing too crazy going on here. Okay, so last, uh, so the next example we're gonna talk about is the graph of cosine x. So let's go ahead and do this example. So let me just do, write it, write it down. So example, identify the absolute and relative extrema of f of x is equal to cosine of x. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this graph, so right here. Okay, so cosine x looks something like this, roughly speaking. So let's keep going, draw a few more kind of curves. Okay, so this is the graph, so this is the x-axis and that's the y-axis. Okay, so notice there's a maximum always occurring at one. There's a minimum always occurring at negative one, so negative one, one, negative one, one, and negative one. Okay, so notice that the maximum always occurs at one, and the minimum always occurs at negative one. So in general, when does cosine equal one and when does cosine equal minus one? Okay, well, we know that cosine of zero is equal to one. We know that cosine of two pi is equal to one. We also know that cosine of minus two pi is equal to one. We know that cosine of four pi is equal to one and so on. So naturally, it makes sense to write that for every x equals plus or minus 2n pi, we have an absolute maximum. So for every x equals plus or minus 2n pi, we have a maximum. Or to be very clear, it's an absolute maximum. Okay, now what about the situation where it's a negative? Well, okay, let's just kind of think about this for a second. For So this was for a maximum, just to be very clear about this. In the case of a minimum, well, we have something different going on here. This time we have cosine of pi equals minus 1, cosine of minus pi equals minus 1 cosine of 3 pi equals minus 1, cosine of minus 3 pi equals minus 1, and so on. Now notice how this occurs at every multiple of 2n pi plus pi. So what do I mean by that? I mean to say that for every x equals pi plus or minus 2n pi, so every odd integer of pi, we get a minimum. So we get a minimum at this point and it's an absolute minimum. So just to be very clear about what's going on there. So that was our last example for maxima and minima. In the later videos, we'll talk about how to actually compute maxima and minima using something called the critical point method in the next video. But for now, this is just a very brief kind of introduction to how extrema works, what, what is extrema, and the concept of how maxima and minima works in the case of just simple graphs. But in the following video, we'll discuss all of that and the concept of critical numbers, which can be used to find maxima and minima for any graph. So with that, I will see you in the next video. If you have any questions, uh, please remember to comment and ask the questions if you wish, and I will be happy to respond. But otherwise, if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I will really appreciate that. See you all in the next video.